For this module, we are looking at queuing theory, which is the same thing as waiting line analysis. So this is prevalent in service industries in particular. Anytime you go somewhere, more than likely you're going to have to wait in line for something, whether it's at a fast food restaurant like McDonald's, or the bank, or the drive-up ATM, or the post office, things like that. You are going to have to wait in line. So we're going to study different models that have been developed to help managers and other people figure out the best way to configure and help alleviate and mitigate issues within their queuing system. So we're going to look at six different uh, operating characteristics is what we're going to call them. And we'll probably actually talk about a few more than these six, but these are the six big ones that the book talks about. The first is the probability that there are no units in the system. In other words, it's empty. So the probability sub-zero, that there's nobody there, so when I walk up, I can get served immediately. As a customer, I like that situation. As someone who is in charge of staffing people and paying them to sit there to do nothing, I do not like it. We're also going to look at the average number of units in the waiting line itself. We're going to call that L. That's the uh, in the waiting line is going to be L sub Q. So it's the length of the line or length of the queue. We're also going to look at the average number of people just in the system, which we're going to call L. So again, the length of the of the system. So that those are numbers. Those are customers generally if we're thinking service industry. It could have, of course be something else if it's manufacturing but I tend to think of it as customers. So those are just raw numbers with number of customers. L is bigger than L sub Q because it includes L sub Q plus whoever's being helped by the server. The other things we're going to look at is the um, average time a unit spends waiting in line, so that's W for waiting, and the sub Q indicates that it's waiting in the queue or the line, and that's in some time unit. We might talk minutes, we might talk hours, depending on what our scale is. And then we also are interested in W, which is the amount of time that a customer spends in the entire system, so both inline and being served. So W is going to be strictly greater than W sub Q. And then we're also going to talk about the probability that I have to wait for service upon arrival. All right. So we can think of that as the quantity 1 minus P sub 0. We'll call it P sub W um, and things like that, but it's, it's basically if it's not, if the system's not empty. Um, so let's, let's maybe focus on the piece of W stuff here for that one. So those are the six operating characteristics we will, characteristics. We will um, talk about a few other things as well that are interesting like blocking probability and stuff like that. So the next thing I want to briefly touch on is the the structure of a of a waiting line itself. Um, so we can break it up into parts. We can break it up into uh, the waiting line, the service facility, things like that. But let's let's talk about the the actual configure physical configuration of a waiting line system. So we could have a single server, and then we can have people that are waiting in line, right? Or this person up here is being helped by the server. That's a single server, single line um, system. We're going to call that an MM1. The 1 stands for a single server. The M stands for Markovian, and we'll talk about Markovian in class. I'm not going to get into it on this video. The other thing we could do is you will see this at airports and banks and USPS or yeah, United States Postal Service where we have multiple servers but a single line that forms. 
right? And then when one of these servers become free, then I go to the next free one. That is different than what you see at a grocery store where we have multiple servers that are serving people, but then a line forms behind each one of those. Generally that happens, we do that in a grocery store because of lack of space. I think the book talks about Whole Foods and Chelsea um, and so they have, in, in New York City. They do have a different kind of configuration which is kind of kind of cool to look at if you want to look at that. And then we could have stuff that we're not going to get into um, which is the uh, tandem queues which means I have uh, I first have to be helped here and then I, there's a second step that I then have to go to do and get into the second line. Um, that's interesting, but we're not going to talk about that. The two that we're going to focus on uh, is the MM1 and some, and then the MMK, uh, which is K's number of servers. So in this case, I, it would the K would have been three. And then we're going to look at some specialized things of those. We're going to look at the um, an M G1. We're going to look G stands for general distribution. And then we're going to also look at fixed or finite population, things like that. How big the size can be, things like that. So we're mostly going to stick with those uh, where we have a single line right, going through. So as should be obvious now, we are dealing with two different probability distributions. We have the arrival process. Which, dis, which is going to be a probability distribution. We're going to use, when we have an M up front, that stands for Markovian, it's going to be a Poisson arrival process, which is a discrete distribution, and we'll talk about what that looks like. And then we have the service process itself, which if we are using the M, that stands for an exponential distribution. And we'll take a look at what what that looks like and why that's why those are nice. When we have an MM, we get very nice closed form solutions. Uh, you can think of the exponential distribution as Poisson distributions as flip sides of one another. So then what we're going to do is after we do all that, we're going to after we create those six different characteristics, operating characteristics that we're interested in, then we're going to add on top of that money, right? We're going to do you know, we're going to put in two costs, we're going to do a cost for waiting and a cost for service and we're going to combine those to get a total cost per time unit um, where the cost per waiting is multiplied times the number of people in the system and the cost for service is multiplied times the number of servers that we have. So that's we're going to look at a, a good example of that at the end of our lecture. So that is the basics of queuing theory that we're going to cover and that should be good.